All right, cool. All right, so a quick programming note. Um, we're actually going to wrap up the book and the, the, we're going to kind of combine two coaching sessions today. We, we, uh, by design, if you go back to the original uh, game plan, we had this meeting and one more meeting, all right, scheduled, which was uh, November 2nd, I believe. And then we're still going to meet November 2nd. But now instead of doing 100K, we're going to wrap up 100K. Uh, today uh, on the November 2nd meeting at 10, we're going to do a, um, uh, a Why You Incorporate seminar. Uh, November's a good time to do that. So uh, anybody here incorporated uh, as an agent? Okay, Sherry is. Awesome. Good. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, good. Well, come November 2nd, we're going to teach a class on that. We'll be invited. So if you have other people from within the office, outside of uh, Future Home, anybody else you want to join, uh, feel free. We're going to be sending out an email to the masses, to all, whatever, 12, 15,000 agents in the Tampa Bay area. We're going to be teaching it Tuesday night. Uh, like we do instead of uh, the 100K there on the November 1st and also November 2nd. So you'll be seeing an email from us uh, about it, and you can register uh, for that. So we make sure because we obviously uh, we'll probably we usually fill up the rooms pretty good on, on that one because it's a, it's a hot topic. November is a good time because that gives you some time to maybe get everything squared away and maybe hit the ground running come January 1st. Um, it's it's you're going to see it's a great idea to do. All right, if you're planning on making it in this business. All right, and actually making any type of money whatsoever, even half of 100K, all right, then you need to uh, incorporate. You'll save money um, uh, by doing it. It's, it's, and it's, that's the real reason, by the way, I'm kind of stealing my own thunder, but the real reason to do it is all about money. It's about tax savings. It's not about the legal protection and all that kind of stuff. That's something completely different, all right? Uh, ultimately, the broker gets sued, not you. All right. Okay. Isn't that great? All right. And so uh, with that in mind, um, it's your LLC is not going to keep you from being sued or anything like that. The real issue is uh, uh, tax savings. Okay. So we can get that done. All right. So, okay. So we're going to wrap this up. I have everybody here has either been here, right? Kind of in the midst of it, been here before and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So I just kind of put this slide uh, in here just so we go through it in case I got some new people in the room. I'm doing this in, in Orlando tonight and tomorrow. We've got a lot of new people coming. So I kind of uh, uh, fin finished this in here. But these are the kind of things that we talked about, you know, all this kind of stuff that we were planning on doing. These are kind of the, our motto, our mantra, how we're going to live, how what we're going to do, um, and how we're going to make this happen. Now, we talked about a lot. Now, again, this is an old slide because now we've changed bank-owned open houses are no longer bank-owned open houses. What are they called? Traffic-generating events. That's right, TGEs, traffic-generating events, all right? Because it doesn't matter. It could be at the flea market. It could be an open house, could be a bank-owned open house, could be a regular open house, it could be uh, um, uh, anywhere. Uh, uh, um, I saw, what's her name, um, Janina uh, Wozniak, you know that little, uh, uh, cute little short thing? Uh, yeah, right, Polish powder keg. Um, that uh, she just had uh, an event somewhere like at a, it was like a school event, or they set up a table and you know, and just and made some really good contacts. Again, that's another example of a traffic generating event. Hosting something at a 5K race uh, is a traffic generating event. All you know, whatever it means to actually get in front of people, right? And so it's not just bank-owned open houses anymore. It's 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 any type of thing that's going to allow you to get face to face. Because remember, eyeball to eyeball is the winner, right? We're going to beat people. Eyeball to eyeball is going to beat computer to eyeball every time, right? So. Perfect. And you have both? Both, both yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. And these are at the flea markets, is what she's talking about where she has those. So uh, talk to Sherry about those. That's awesome. It's you know, it's it's amazing just seeing, you know, it's you're out there where people are, right? And you get a chance to uh, to, to just get eyeball to eyeball with people and it's just a, it's a matter and it's so here's the thing if you're not having the success you want go do something right I mean just go I mean it's not um, there's no secret to any of this right it's it's the secret is is getting eyeball to eyeball with people and then getting good at converting them into leads now someone came, uh, was talking to me yesterday um, and as they're having a hard time so it seems like they've got really good buyers and they seem to be working and then they fall off and they're not trans trans uh, translating into sales, right? I said, well, <clears throat> for me at the time, I always looked at sales as kind of a funnel, right? So you got this big funnel and you got prospects, kind of potential leads coming in the top and then down through, they all trickle down and out the bottom comes actual closings, right? Well, 
it, the goal is to have more people coming out the bottom, right? Okay, so how do I do that? Well, there's two ways. You can either increase the size of the hole at the bottom, okay, which means that's your trans, that's your, uh, uh, your conversion rate, basically. That's, a, hey, look, I'm doing better with the people that are in the hopper. I got more of them following through and getting out the bottom as a closing, right? Or you can leave the hole the same at the bottom and just put more people in the top, all right? Now, ideally, you put more people in the top and increase your conversion rate, so now you got a multiplied effect. But sometimes, and I'm, I just kind of use the illustration to, to point out to this guy, sometimes there's a clog in there. All right, now what that is, I don't know. We can't see it. It's kind of like what's clogging my drain. I don't know. I can't see it, but I got to fix it, right? So sometimes it means a matter of pouring Drano down, means it's shoving something down there, or if enough, you get enough people coming in the top, and even if, let's say, there's a clog and people are trickling out still, but water's trickling out, but not as fast as it should in a hole that size normally, well, then you got to put even more people in so that the trickle can get, and then something's going to happen. All of a sudden, it busts loose, and now it really comes out hard and heavy. So... Whenever I was in a situation like that, I just said, I got to do more, right? I mean, if I wasn't meeting my average of one a week, all right, uh, or two a week, actually, because I wanted one every time I sat in an open house, then I've got to do something. That means I got to sit more open houses. I got to do something that's going to create more traffic, that's going to create this hundred transactions coming out the bottom, all right? Whatever it takes to do that, I don't know. Get better at converting the people that do walk in the door, put more people in the funnel, combination of both, whatever it takes. But I just know I got to do it. And we, we, the only way we know that we have to do it is we have to actually look at our numbers and be aware of what we're doing, right? Just sticking our head in the sand and worrying about it all of a sudden 10 weeks from now saying, oh, I haven't had a sale in 10 weeks, huh? Well, I mean, 10 weeks is a lot of time, all right, to go through, all right? It's a fifth of a year, all right? So we got to, you know, got to make sure we're analyzing this a little more consistently. That's part of our Sunday night ritual, right? that we're checking things out on a consistent basis so that we're able to see and, and, and be aware of what's happening, all right? But traffic generating events, converting those people, uh, working with investors, working with first-time home buyers, and then let your buyers lead you to listings, all right? Do not get caught up in this stage, all right, up until a point that you've been in the business long enough and you've got so many orange trees producing fruit. Don't get me wrong, in our next meeting, we have a next group, right? That's for our uh, people that have done four to five million uh, in sales in the last 12 months and or did at least 15 transactions in the last 12 months. There, <clears throat> I'll be quite honest, I teach a different uh, brand. All right, If they're looking to build a walk away thing and say, hey, look, you guys need to build some orange groves. You need to start listing some properties. You have some fruit on the tree. You have some success. You have the ability. You've had people that you've helped in the past. We need to learn to talk to those people on a consistent basis and let them lead you to listings. All right. Um, and they might have the fruit on the tree enough to be able to go up uh, head to head with another listing agent and say, hey, look, I'm going to compete against the, another listing agent. You're going to interview three agents. I'll be one of those and I'll, I'm ready to go. All right. When you're first brand new in the business or don't have a whole lot of success, you don't have that confidence that I'm just here to tell you, if you're brand new in the business, and you go up with somebody who has 20 years experience and sold 47 percent of that subdivision over the last five years, you're going to lose. You're not going to get that listing if it's you know, now, how are you going to get that listing? It's if you had the relationship and they never even talked to the other person. All right? But that's about the only way. It sounds brutal, but it's true. Okay? It's, and so if that's the case, then why worry about going after that? I'm going to wait until I perfect my listing presentation. How about go work with enough buyers that they come and say, please list my home? All right? And then you worry about your listing presentation. All right? All right? And... Come list my home. Here's your listing presentation. Here's the paperwork, and here's what I think we should list it for. What do you think? Okay, there's your listing presentation because you already have the relationship. Remember, the relationship is going to build that, all right? So, uh, uh, and I know this is different than what other people teach, right? Other people teach, hey, well, look, we've got to perfect this, and you've got to have this listing presentation down, and you've got to practice it in front of your mirror and all that kind of stuff. I say BS, right? Because, again, at the end of the day, they're going to look at the stats and say, okay, well, and how many listings do you have? And you're like, uh... If you sign, I'll have one. <laughs> All right? Okay? <laughs> right? Okay? And so with that in mind, why, go, why worry about that, right? We, I think we stress out about too much about that stuff. And when we should be just going out having another traffic generating event, meeting somebody I can get eyeball to eyeball with and have a great relationship with and build a, a deeper relationship with a few people and let them lead me to new business. All right? Because remember, if you were at uh, our last office meeting, Tracy Wilkinson, shared that, you know, say she does some higher end stuff. So she goes, hey, she wants to do basically 20 transactions a year, right? And the 20 transactions a year based upon her volume gives her a pretty good income, right? Because she sells 
four to five hundred thousand dollar homes, all right, on average, that's anywhere for 20 transactions will be eight to ten million in sales. All right, so she's you know fine with that and it's good. But remember, she came from a uh, you know, princess house, which is like Tupperware and all those kind of you know uh, uh, places. And she said, if I wanted to have 20 parties, princess house parties in a year, I didn't say I need to have find 20 people to have a party. She goes, I just needed four. All right, because the goal of every princess house party is to have another party. Okay, is to book another party, right? And that was the whole reason. So she said, if I want, I don't need 20 transactions, I need four transactions. Because four are gonna lead me to six, and those six are gonna lead me to another 12, and there's my 22. All right? So it's just, if we start to break it down, that it's really not that hard, right? And especially with the transactions lead you to transactions concept, then you know what? It, it can be real a lot easier than we think. All right? And we start to get there. All right? So I'm gonna go through these coaching. Here's the thing the book, Michael, Michael's book is awesome. It's like a buffet line though, right? There is, I mean, I can get my feedback on with the best of them, all right? But even the, as hungry as I could possibly be, I can't eat everything at a buffet, all right? Michael's book, you know, all the stuff between doing all these things and having the, the hosting the um, uh, housewarming parties and, and, and all the kind of stuff that you're doing, you know, making sure that you're having networking stacks and all this kind of great ideas, all right? But even as much as I like food, I don't like everything at a buffet anyway, right? And you're not going to like everything that he puts out there. But I think that was his, his goal is put it all out there. Find what works for you, all right? There are some core true principles, I think, that, that we have to abide by. And those are kind of like the basics that apply to everything, which are the four rituals, Right? You've got to be, that's part of being disciplined in what you're going to do. That's planning your day and planning your week and planning your reflecting on your day. All right, uh, Being organized before you tidy up at night, setting up your first and tens for the next morning, all that kind of stuff. You start to live a life like that. There's that freedom and structure kind of stuff that starts to go through. But then <clears throat> the cool thing about reading the book, and I encourage you to reread these, these lessons after we go through five and six again, just reread the chapters associated with it. <clears throat> It'll keep you fresh in your mind, and you know what? You may not use it, and then four months from now, all of a sudden, boom, this is the time for the reticular activation system. Maybe we talk about, it's, it's time for that, right? Okay, that's the one where, hey, look, now you seem like every time you see blue pickup trucks, now that you want to decide to buy a blue pickup truck, right? All whatever, right? Or it's time to ask the, are you the chosen one, all right? And it just all of a sudden comes out because it was there, all right? It's not that you use it all the time, so it's, it's available, all right? So, in here on page 99 to 102, he talks about the failure to communicate. This is the one where uh, he, um, uh, first time home buyer, and he just emailed the offer over to them and said, hey guys, sign it and come on, you know, we'll, we'll get this offer going. And he called them back a day and a half later, and they're like, oh, you know what, I haven't got that back from you, what happened? And uh, we, you know, we're thinking we're just going to rent for a while still, and you know, and we're going to hold off. And he realized that, what was it, you know what, don't ever, as much as, you know, uh, as much as, as much success as you will eventually have if you apply these principles, don't ever dismiss yourself from what it's like to buy their first home, right? So first time home buyer, right? the only exception to that would be is if you had gone over the contract already with them in depth, right? Which I encourage you to do or at least have them, remember I talk about when I'm driving them around showing properties, I have them have a copy, I give them a copy of the contract early. Hey, take this home. When you get a chance, read over it. There's some stuff that's going to make complete sense, stuff that won't. Let's talk about it. So we have that all out of the way because now in today's market, sometimes we have to find a property. We have to move on it quickly. All right. And it's not, we're not going to have time to kind of, but let's dialogue about it now. All right. What are, you know, hey, I got a question on paragraph eight or whatever. Let's dialogue about that on the front side. Plus you're getting them into the mode of, hey, we're going to, we're not just looking at houses because House Hunters is a cool show, right? We're looking at houses because we're eventually going to get to this paper. And this paper is called a contract, all right? And it means we're going to actually buy a home, right? So kind of planting that seed, right? You're, you're persuading them, all right, to, um, uh, to, to think along those lines, all right? <clears throat> so he sent this offer over to them. They called back and said, hey, look, you know, and he realized, hey, I should have sat down and, and, and we should have gone over that offer together in person, right? They would have signed it. I guarantee it. <clears throat> they wouldn't have got cold feet if I hadn't gotten lazy, all right? Now, remember... Technology is great, but technology can kill you too, right? Okay, you got to be high tech, but also high touch, right? And where's that balance? Because if all of a sudden we're so high tech that we become dismissed from them, hey, why didn't you think about me? I haven't seen you in three months. 
Yeah, but you've been getting emails from me huh? and the automatic updates and all the properties I've been sending you. Yeah, but where have you been? Right? I, mean, I told you, I started losing business. I used to sell a lot of homes to friends and family and coworkers, right, of the buyers I was working with. All of a sudden, technology came along and I stopped getting those uh, relationships built and I stopped getting introductions to their coworkers and such. And I realized I was no longer dropping off listings to them like I used to in the old days, right? Okay, horse and buggy days when I used to, we used to show property. <laughs> all right, okay, well, not that. All right, but, all right, but it literally, back in the old days, all right, we used to have to, you know, I had to go drop off listings to their work. Remember, I told you that. And I, I drop off a, a new set of three properties came on the market, not because it automatically updated them and sent them an email at 438 this morning, like it does for us now, right? I actually had to go print them, hand deliver them, but every time I did, Somebody around them or somebody else, their boss, their underling, there's somebody next to them in the cubicle, peek over the cubicle, they hear us tie logging, and next thing you know, I'm getting new business. I stopped getting that because now they were getting, it was a little easier for me. I was out golfing. Hey, this is great. All the time I used to drive around and do it, I was golfing, all of a sudden I couldn't afford to golf. I'm like, well, I got time to golf, now I don't have the money to golf, because why? Because I'm not getting the business that, you know, so it was one of those, you know, oh no, what do I do? Well. Maybe go old school on some things, right? Or find new ways. Do it. We talked about, hey, go do a loan uh, clear to close appreciation day, right? Hey, we've got your clear to close. Let's go celebrate that. But get up a box of 12 cookies at Publix and put a one helium balloon on it and go walk it into their work, all right? And say, what are we celebrating, all right? And then, oh, what's going on? Invite your coworkers. And what do we sell? Oh, you know, Susan got her clear to close. Why not? Right? Be on the edge. Do something different, right? Get eyeball to eyeball with people. It's a traffic generating event, in my opinion, right? So why waste that opportunity to do that? So anyway, don't fail to communicate, all right? <clears throat> he talks about in his database, don't market to your database, but communicate with them. It's funny because um, Cindy Hayden, a uh, really successful agent, and uh, she is, um, you know, Michael uh, Mayer, the, the author of the book, uh, a lot of his stuff comes from Joe Stumpf. You guys, Joe Stump is S-T-U-M-P-F. It's a by referral only, right? And he was, a, he was one of, uh, he was a Joe Stump follower <coughs> and did a great job and broke out and did some of this other stuff. But a lot of his stuff is really not new, right? It's just a compilation of other things. But um, Cindy uses Joe's stuff a lot. And I'm going to study a little bit more now because, I mean, I think once you get to a phase where she was telling me she pays 200 bucks a month to be part of this Joe Stump thing. Mm -hmm. And then but there's a lot that he does for that, including giving two Facebook posts a week that are, here's the whole goal of all his stuff. It's not to sell people, <clears throat> it's to elicit conversations. And it's deep thinking stuff. Remember that story I tell you about the, remember the, the, the mom who took their son to the, to the village leader who, and she wanted him to stop eating sugar and, uh, and then he, the guy said, come back in a week and he came back a week later and he said, stop eating sugar and then all of a sudden the kid did. That story um, came from one of the Joe Stump things that, and that's the ones that Cindy just sends out, right? That kind of stuff. It's just, hey, that's kind of a cool, you know what I mean? It's not, hey, I want to list your home and you know what the market is in your neighborhood or, um, and I, nothing against this, but I see everybody on Facebook uh, using, um, I'm sure they're subscribing to us, but uh, wouldn't you love this as your patio? All right, and they show a picture, you know, I'm sure it's to elicit a conversation and I get it. It's better than nothing. But if everybody's doing it, it's kind of like uh, I'm TSA pre-check now when I fly, but everybody's pre-checked. So if everybody's pre-checked and really nobody's pre-checked, okay, right? Okay, if we're all pre-checked, then are we uh, exactly? Then then aren't we? Okay, then what is pre-check if we're all pre-checked? All right, and so though the pre-check line's five times longer than the regular line, so maybe I should go in the regular line. All right, so but in same thing, if everybody's sending the same stuff, but it's just trying to say maybe elicit some. Um, conversation starters, right? It's like, and she'll, Cindy says she'll do that, and then he'll send out a postcard once a month to people that she pre selects, mm -hmm. all right? Cindy also, by the way, and this is all through Joe Stump, is um, uh, the goal is when she has a listing, because she's switched, switched to listings, she made a conscientious decision this year. Uh, she, her goal was to do 10 listings, and she wasn't a big list herself admitted. She's done 17, all right? And um, she's averaging, she has her numbers, 2.8 sales per listing. All right, what does that mean? It means that she's selling the listing and 1.8 more properties from other people that are being attracted to it. But she's conscientiously doing this, right? And what she's doing is she's sending out these, uh, per Joe Stump, a letter from the seller 
to 100 uh, neighbors pre-list coming soon on the market. So she has an open house before it's on the market for the neighbors, has an open house on the market for that she promotes through Zillow, all right, to, to, do, to generate all this activity. And so some of it she's, and then she gets calls from agents. She's like, yeah, sure, come on, bring them. I have a, 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 it's going on the market. It's just not on the market yet. And we'll still honor the co-broke and everything else. She's not trying to alienate people, all right? She sends in the waiver that you have to, that, that, yeah, absolutely, um, that, that gets that done. So it's not, it's not a problem. But, you know, if you can sell, all of a sudden, three properties instead of one, then that's a good thing, right? Okay, and the seller's happy because she's generating this, you know, she's having 20 and 30 people through a regular open house before it even comes on the market. So, but this is all stuff that she's been taught through. And Joe Stump is a neuropsychologist, all right, PhD. So he has studied words. And so she's really big into words people use, and, and so does he, right? That it's just like Michael, right? We don't say referral, we say introduction, right? All right, I'd love, I'd love for you to connect me with other people like you that I can help, all right? It's, it, help is a great word, all right? It's better than assist, better than guide or direct or uh, fiduciate. Is there such a word as fidu fiduciate? Is that, is, that the, is that the verb associated with fiduciary? I don't know, all right, so, all right? But you, they're like, what the heck is that? You, what do you mean? Because remember, we talked about referral sounds too legal, right? Ah, no, no, no. All right, or that's, you know what I mean? But hey, yeah, I'll, I'll introduce you to some of my friends that you gave me, you helped me, all right? I'd love for you to help them. Those are all, that's natural conversation to have, right? That's what we're looking for, right? So let's, you know, pay attention to that. So learn to, to, to communicate with your people, not market to them. Nobody wants to be marketed to, right? But you don't mind communicating with people. You market to someone, but you communicate with your community. All right, so your community, Cindy's done a great job, and I use her as an illustration of creating a community. She has her Sunday night thing that she gets on, uh, going on every, every Sunday night. She, now she works the beaches, so <clears throat> she has this group where she'll, she'll get together, and she's been doing it for four or five years now, where every Sunday night, uh, with rare exception, she'll find a place that they're going to, you know, hey, look, we get, she'll get 10 or 12 past clients together. Here's where we're meeting. I'll buy the appetizers. We'll come in. We'll just kind of break bread together. And she's real big into sunsets on the beach because she, that's what she's selling that lifestyle, right? And so um, uh, they, they do it right around time when the sun's going to be setting so that she finds some really cool places on the beach. They're all there. And so it's just, you know, she's done a great job of creating a community. And now all her leads are, I mean, really just coming from uh, her sphere, right? It's her, her orange growth, if you will, all right? That's what we want to be, all right? Proactive communication talks about we're going to communicate with people. We're going to do it with a purpose, all right? We don't just put people in a database and start this email drip campaign without a purpose, right? Um, uh, if you're going to spend the time to do this, then do it and follow up with it, right? Now, initially, you're like, well, I, you know, my database isn't working for me. You know what? I think you might need a fresh database. What does that mean? Go have more TGs, traffic generating events, so you can create a fresh database of people who know you now, right? that hey, know exactly where you, they might know you before as, oh, that's, you know, Bob when he was a school teacher. No, and you need to know Bob as the realtor, right? Okay, and so, um, not Bob the Builder. Is what it's <laughs> Bob the Bill, he can do it. <laughs> yeah, he can fix it, that's right. Yes, he can. That's right, that's uh, Bob the Realtor, he can sell it. Yes, he can. All right, <laughs> all right. Um, proactive communication. Um, grade your database. That's where he goes through. Okay, you know what? You got all these people in your database where he goes through and talks to A, Bs, and Cs, and Ds. Go back and reread some of this stuff. It's really good. All right? Now, again, you got to have a, a database to grade. All right? If you don't have a great database, then just, you know what? Weed them out. All right? It's, uh, it's um, just find the people that are going to do it. Plan your whole year of communication. Again, I'm going to use this, this Joe Stump. Cindy says she has her whole year planned out. She knows exactly when she's going to send what and when and where. All right? So once you get that done, it's like, boom. You don't play, if you can plan your whole year of communication in a half day, boy, how freeing is that? Mm -hmm. Now it's just time to let the deals roll in and let me just go work the things as I do it. Oh, I can never find time to market to my people and to communicate. With my, well, just, you know what, technology, this is where technology, if it's going to be electronic and all this kind of, this is where it can be your friend, right? Where you can get that stuff taken care of in a half a day, automate that, so that then now you have the time to go show up at their work and deliver this kind of stuff and go eyeball to eyeball and have some lunches and go grab coffee with somebody or have the Sunday night things and get people together and all that kind of stuff. Fair enough? All right. Um, the success series, he kind of, that on page 107 goes through a series of direct email, a direct mail, email campaign, follow-up phone call, birth call on their birthday, all that kind of stuff that you should have planned out, all right, in there. All right, so in the coaching six, six, six you should have called. That was the one where he, uh, um, 
hadn't touched base with his, uh, I think it was an old roommate from college or something like that, and he finally touched base and 18 months later, and she's like, they just bought, bought a new home and sold their other one. He's like, what the heck? <laughs> right? Okay, that's right. And the answer is, you should call. I forgot you were in business. And, you know, and, and again, whose fault is it? What's that? Absolutely. You know, and again, I told you, self-admitted, I was the worst at this, right? That I was, I got so uh, uh, cocky and arrogant that I could create 100 transactions out of thin air every year. Right when I could, I was right. I was. I'll just meet new people. All right, it's stupid. Right, that I was just totally ignoring my past clients that I had serviced well. Right, so I literally usually twice a year I would communicate with them. All right, nothing was automated, nothing was set up. It was when new bond money was coming out because I worked with so many first-time home buyers. So when new bond money I knew it was coming out, I'd send a flyer out to all my people through the mail, right, through direct mail, uh, and have email addresses and all that stuff. Um, and it was always an eye-opener to me on two fronts. I always got new business, all right? So it's like, hello, do this more often, right? And I always got return mail saying no longer at this address. It's like, hello, what the heck just happened, right? Because my thought is, how are you no longer at that address without you calling me to be no longer at that address, right? <laughs> well, and whose fault was that, theirs or mine? My fault. Right? I didn't do it. You know what I mean? That was my fault that I didn't communicate with them and stay in touch that they knew that, hey, look, I got to call Bob. It's time to sell. Right? They reached out to somebody else. Okay, they got a postcard in the mail from somebody who was farming the area because I didn't have a relationship with them. Right? I, and, and I did that and I also sent out uh, Christmas cards. Same thing. I sent out Christmas cards, nothing related to real estate. I always got business and I always got return mail. All right? So it was an eye opener for me. All right? To make sure I did that. So, I that yeah getting on a plane from Tampa going um, up to um, Maryland and I'm wearing my football jersey, right? Right. Ravens. And I get on this plane and this guy on the aisle seat grabs my hand. He's like, hey, you. And I look at him and I'm like, how do I know this guy? Right. Like I'm thinking, did I close a sale with him? Like, right. He looks sort of familiar. It's this old guy in a white hair and I'm right. like, I'm like, gosh, I, you know, all these things going sure, on. Sure, right, right. I look over right next to him. It's my mom's cousin sitting there, my mom's first cousin, and this was her new husband. I've seen him a couple times. Right, right, right. We don't, you know. Right. So I said, hey, is anybody sitting there? I'm like, Dot, how you doing? Is anybody sitting there at the window? They said, no, come on in. I sit down, and she says, oh, my gosh. She goes, Mike, she goes, you're not going to believe this. She goes, you're not going to believe what we were doing in Florida. And I said, I don't know. Yeah, right. I don't have any idea. She's like, enjoying the beach. Yeah, yeah right. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're looking at houses. And I said, Really? She goes, I just remembered you sell real estate. She's like, Mike, we found our new realtor. And so Good for luckily you caught him right, exactly. God, uh, they didn't buy anything and they weren't real happy with the person they had. Well, see. So yeah, and it really it turned out well. And but uh, said, whew, yeah, right? One of my great ambassadors at this point, I sold him a house. That's and awesome. We, we've been reacquainted. You know, right, right. I'm back in with the family and we've sure. done family picnics and things like that now, so it's been amazing, but like I said, it was close. That, story. that was a close one. Oh my gosh! Yeah. My mom's first cousin, you know, like yeah. So. Yeah, it, and it's so, so you got it, and you don't. You have to be. You just got to. If you were in touch with them, on something else, they would remember. So you, you know, because at the bottom, it still can say, hey, you know, Sherry Lowry, future home realty, whatever, yada yada, right? But you don't have to be in their face about, hey, look at a buy or sell. It's just, hey, look. Here's a story that I ran across I thought was great. You know what I mean? You're just communicating with them. And you are you got a system to, to be in, in dialogue with them. Because remember, you don't need a whole lot. You only need 150, right? Because 150 squared is 22,500, all right? That's, and it's a lot of people, all right? You can never help that many. All right, guaranteed response email. That's kind of what we almost teach as one of our, uh, our compelling PSs, all right? The guaranteed response email, if you go back and look at that, that is, um, hey, uh, Got something I want to run by you, give me a call sometime. All right? Or give me a call as soon as you can or something like that. It's, you know, it's one of those. That's, a, that's a good, you know, now what do you do when they say that? That's when he teaches that that's when you're going to deliver the am I the chosen one script. All right? And you got to be, now, but you could do anything. You know, that could be the one that um, uh, one of our agents sent out his, his note cards that first time. And he wrote, hey, give me a call sometime. It's something I want to uh, run by you. And he called and he said, he all of a sudden he's starting to get calls more than he thought. And he goes, wow, people are really reading these notes. So the first one person he called, he said, uh, and that's when he did the whole networking thing. Hey, you know, I'm a realtor, and it seems like I, I have a lot of good contacts. I was just wondering if there's anything you need help with. I, you know, it seems like I tend to just run across a lot of people now that I'm doing this. Anything going on in your life? And, and it was a young couple. Hey, you know what? 
you know, it's funny now that we bought our house and it's been a, you know a couple of years. We were just talking the other day that we need uh, probably need to put a will together. We have we don't have a will. You know, I mean, that's probably the next step. You know, of a good you know attorney that could help us with that. And he didn't. He said, you know, but my dad does. I bet so many. And he got back to him. So that was that compelling. So whatever it is, that's a you know guaranteed response emails is what he talks about there. Example of that, and, and go. All right. So go back and reread those. All right. But as a wrap, I kind of want to put a bow around this stuff because, quite frankly, guys, none of this is, A, that difficult, or B, um, that earth-shattering, all right? The reality is, is you have to do it, right? And now remember the other thing that Tracy Wilkinson uh, taught in her class is that she's always taught the CIA, all right? Which now, um, it's officially, I can say that I've used it enough times, so now, here's what I call it. I call it the CIA, all right? And it's consistency, implementation, and accountability. Those three things on any method is gonna be wor is gonna work. Now technically you can't be consistent until you implement, so really it should be ICA, okay? <laughs> but we all remember it because the CIA sticks in our mind. All right, it's kind of it's like one of those so you've seen that that meme that's out there that says, um, <clears throat> uh, I used to think I was O C D, but I really I'm uh, CDO because that's improper, that's in that's in alphabetical order. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so obsessive compulsive disorder that I, that, that bugged me that it had to be CDO instead of OCD. All right, so, but yeah, so it really should be, right, we've got to implement, be consistent in our implementation, and be accountable to somebody that's going to hold us accountable to that implementation, and with that, you win, all right? That's absolutely the end, end game, all right? It's not that difficult. So here's some finishing thoughts. We talked about the fact that I used to tell Michael, or I told him at one point that he named his book wrong. It shouldn't be the seven levels of communication. It should be the generosity cycle or generosity generation or something like that. And he told me where I could pack my uh, opinion, all right, because he basically said, well, what's the name of your book, Bob? And I said, okay, yeah, good, fair enough. All right, so, <laughs> all right, fair enough. All right, touche, and we'll move on. Um, but the reality is this, is that the main thing in this is the generosity cycle, right? That you go give massive value first, and somebody you give massive value first to is obligated psychologically to reciprocate that because their life is out of balance, right? Okay, and so with their life being out of balance, it seems like, boy, I need to push that back, right? And it could be something as simple as somebody giving you a, a, a water infusion bottle, all right? Or whatever, it, it doesn't take much. Do you realize, I was thinking about this yesterday, I was in Publix picking up the fruit, all right? And I was in a little bit of a hurry because I was late for the, the next meeting, but I don't know if it's just, there's nothing about me. I just, I just walk with my head up and looking to make eye contact with people. All right, so I'm in Publix, I'm walking by in the back now because I, I got the produce, I was heading to get the nuts, right? I know exactly where they are in the old smart, you know, I, I got this path down, all right? So if anybody wanted to assassinate me, they'd be easy to, I don't vary my routes very well. All right, okay, somebody gets asked me in a heartbeat. All right, so I'm walking through, and a dude busts out of the, you know, the back meat room, all right, to go load the meat, all right? And there were four people around me, all right? But something made him look up at me and just say, hey, what's going on? And I said, hey, man, and that was it. But I said, I said, as I was walking by, I said, why me? There were four other people, I looked back, and the other four people are, eh, nope, you know what I mean? Head down. If you just walk, if you differentiate yourself just by walking around with a smile on your face, right? Things change, right? People all of a sudden are like, wow, what's up with that dude? What's up with that gal? Something's just different, right? And so if you just, it's, it's so easy to set yourself apart in the world. It's, it's amazing to me how, how you know, um, uh, our sons, I mean, both of them, you know, when, they, when they're introduced to somebody, we'll, we'll look them in the eye, shake their hand, and say, nice to meet you. And they always say, how are you doing? And they said, they're doing well. All right? We've taught them that, that you're doing well. You don't do good. Missionaries do good. All right? That's a good deed. All right? You are doing. As a, it's actually a, an adverb. You do well. All right? Okay? So I'm doing well. All right? Um, and they're like, oh, wow. What a well-spoken young man. You know what I mean? It's like, hello. You're, you're speaking. And you, but he's, oh, look, he made eye contact and shook somebody. And it's a differentiator, right? It's a huge difference maker. And it's a small thing, but it makes a big difference. So that generosity you give can be the tiniest of things, right? But the tiniest of things are so different in this world that it makes a big difference, right? It really does. So generosity leads to reciprocity. For us, what does reciprocity mean? In our vernacular, it means referrals, all right? The other people that I can help, right? So when I tell them about a great mechanic, that's great, but their reciprocation is them to give me somebody else that I can help 
assist and buy or sell a home. All right, because that's, that's what it is. So those lead to referrals. Referrals lead for me. If I get enough referrals, I can become profitable, right? And profitable enough times becomes prosperous, and then prosperity allows me to be even more generous, and the cycle starts all over, right? And I can just see, start this ball rolling, all right? So that's as, as simple as it gets, as if I had to break it down. All right, remember this, you're going to attract who you are. That same principle that as I was walking through and people, you know what I mean? They're like, oh, I don't know, everybody I seem to run into is a jerk. <laughs> Let's see, you attract who you are and everybody around you is a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> all right? Okay. Uh, let's, if A equals B, all right, and B equals C. <laughs> so just change maybe who you are, right? If you, if you want to change who's hanging around or who you're attracting, then maybe change who you are, right? You got to be aware of what you're attracting, right? And so just keep that in mind sometime, all right? Before, and you might want to rein that in. Boy, everybody around me is a great person, right? <laughs> I'm going to change that thought process now. Earn the right to be heard. This is part of the generosity cycle as well. It's, a, it's another way to do it. But you don't ask for the referral. You earn the right to get one. Right? We're taught so many times to go lead with, hey, I need a referral. Well, what have you done for me? Right? It's a, I use the illustration of uh, churches trying to convert people to Christianity, right? That there's the one version that someone's going to take an 82-pound Bible and thump it over somebody's head and say, you're going to hell. Right? Okay? Or paint John 3.16 on their belly and stand up behind the goalpost as someone's kicking a field goal, thinking that's going to, you know, do it. Or there's the other theory that says, you know what? Like that church member I told you, the church I talked about, that they have like 80 doctors, 80 dentists that attend, and they put this mobile dental thing, and they went to the inner city and put this mo mobile dental lab, and they said, all right, we're just going to fix people's teeth. Right? Hey, come in. And now while they're fixing their teeth, hey, is there anything I can help you with? Anything I can pray for you about? That kind of thing. Now they've earned the right to be heard, right? Before, they could have gone to the inner city and stood on a, on a you know, soapbox and yelled, the rapture's coming, repent now or die, right? And where people are like, uh, yeah, wacko, have a great day, right? Okay? Or they could go earn the right to be heard, right? What's a better way? And that's the same thing we're, we're trying to do with us, right? Is earn, you go give generosity first, and you've earned the right, to receive the, the referral, all right? But you can't expect the referral without earning the right on the front side. Fair enough, all right? Create new habits and become their slave. I'm, you know, self-discipline is the key. All of this is not gonna happen unless we're disciplined within ourself, all right? That's what it takes. And a lot of that means is we're gonna have to create new habits, all right? Because our old habits are getting us what we've been getting, all right? Keep on doing the same thing, keep on getting the same results, and you wonder why, you know, nothing's changing, right? Well, the reality is, in order to change, you better change, right? You know, I told you that was the sage wisdom that I would give if I were the, you know, wise man at the top of the mountain. Oh, wise Bob. What must I do to change my outcome? Oh, young grasshopper. <laughs> in order to change outcome, one must change. Uh, it's it, right? It's a, there is, you know, if you want, don't like what you're getting, change what you're putting in, right? If you don't like the output, change the input, right? It's just, it's just a, a matter of doing that. Take action now. Don't wait, all right? Don't wait until your listing presentation's in perfect condition before you go do one, all right? Matter of fact, don't go do one. Give up on the listing and go find more buyers and let them lead you to free listings that just kind of walk into your lap, all right? Tell you, I mean, just go do it now, right? Remember, I'm a big take action now kind of guy, all right? Go make it happen. Learn to talk to yourself in a new way. All right, this is me just kind of wrapping up all, our last five sessions all because this is key, all right? That if you don't learn to talk to yourself and expect good things of yourself and expect, walk out the door every day expecting a great thing to happen today, all right, you're not going to get great things, all right? And a lot of us have not been conditioned that way. I myself was not conditioned that way. Right? I had to remember Joseph's last name, according to him, was, hey, hi, little guy, what's your name? Joseph, what's your last name? McDougal's are the best. All right? <laughs> because we tried to pour into him because yeah, I was, you know, my conditioning was McDougal's are poor, McDougal's are broke, McDougal's rent. Right? And so I was, you know, I it had to be a chain breaker. I had to be a cycle breaker in my family. All right? And so somebody has to do that, right? And if it's not been, if no one else did it ahead of you, then you are the chain breaker for your group. All right? You have to do it. 
all right? And weed yourself daily. We talked to him, I told you my two neighbors, right? We got Robert and Bill, right? Bill who weeds his, his, his little uh, place on a consistent basis, meaning every day he goes out and checks his mail and gets to weed with his thumb and his forefinger, all right? Pick, pick, done for the day, all right? Robert who ignores it for, you know, a year at a time, goes out there and says, all right, my wife wants to have a party at the house, so I gotta clean this up. And he's out there cussing and swearing for, you know, eight hours for three days straight trying to get this, you know, thing clean. He gets it all clean and said, now just please keep it clean, right? Now it's, all you gotta do is pick, pick, right? If you do it every day. But if you wait six months, now it's time. If you wait a year, now you're getting a backhoe out, all right, to try and get the weeds out. So just let's weed ourselves daily. And we also talked about that if I ever teach this class in Colorado, comes with a whole new perspective, all right? When I say weed yourself, right on, dude. All right. <laughs> we, we, I'm in with you. Weed yourself. Why don't you start with that one? That was the first bullet point. Okay? That's right. Exactly. All right. Uh, to get that done. All right? Okay? That's right. Um, uh, to make that happen. So, all right, cool. Last thing I want to do is I found this slide when I was on the plane yesterday, all right, that I hadn't, I don't know if we've, we've talked about this one. We talked about do it now. It's kind of hard to see, all right? So let me just illustrate it this way. Problem solving, when's the best time to solve a problem? Immediately. Immediately, okay? Early or late, because here's the issue, all right? If we've got, here's the norm, okay? Here's our baseline of a norm. And a deviation, if, if our problem is any deviation from that, okay, from that norm, if that's the problem, all right? Then if we look at this, the longer we wait, if this is kind of a duration of days, all right, the longer we wait, the problem does nothing but grow, okay? Because if the, if the problem is the distance between these two lines, then the time to attack this problem was back there. Because it's a small little tiny problem. No, it's a big problem, right? It's not going to go away. Sticking our head in the sand is not going to make it just disappear. All right, so let's nip it in the bud and attack it now. All right, it's kind of like a weed. All right, if we're gonna weed, let's weed it now instead of having to shovel out the problem later. All right, now's the time to take care of the issue, get it addressed, and uh, if it's a problem that you created, then admit your mistake and get it fixed. All right, if it's a problem that's existing between the, you and another client or something like that, then get, get it. Get it addressed, even if it means alleviating or removing the relationship and say, hey, you know what, maybe it's best we part ways now, all right? It's just whatever it is, make it happen, all right? So just, I, I wanted to share that because that's, that's a good thing. It's, it's a, a solve problems now is the issue, right? So many times we wait, 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 hoping it's just going to go away and it's not going to go away, all right? Communicate, communicate, communicate. We all know that communication is key to a successful relationship, all right? Without a doubt, it has to be, right? Effective communication, no matter what relationship it is. It can be a marital relationship, a, 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 a parent and a child relationship, whatever. Okay, you've got to be able to communicate and communication, communicating that issue. And hey, look, here's, here's where it is. Because trust me, you don't want somebody that's going to not tell you the problem. All right, because then it's too, you know, because they're letting it bottle up. You'd rather have somebody that's going to voice that now and let's figure it out and see if we can get it fixed. Fair enough? Cool? All right, I think... <clears throat> That is it. Remember next time, we're going to kind of, by the way, real, real quickly, obviously stay engaged in the 100K group page, all right? <clears throat> I'm going to encourage you, I'm going to encourage on the 100K page again, all right? There is value. Not only, obviously, eyeball to eyeball works when you're getting in front of clients, right? But eyeball to eyeball works when you're getting together with other like-minded people, because that's why we do some of this stuff, right? Remember all the our commitments we committed to, all right? Why do we... <clears throat> 30 minutes cardiovascular exercise, volunteering, drinking six hours, uh, 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 doing our um, volunteer at a nonprofit. What happens there? You're around like-minded people, right? Good things happen when you're around like-minded people. When you donate 10% of your income to a church and then you go worship at a church, right? What happens there? You're around like-minded people. I'm not saying isolate yourself so you're only around you know, people that believe exactly the way you believe. I think it's good to be out there and dialoguing and, and, and entertaining thought and all that kind of stuff around uh, people with differing points of view. That's a cool thing, right? But I'm just saying, you know what? Uh, because of that, set up some times. You know, people say, oh, you should set up some. Why do I have to set up the mastermind groups for you guys to get together? All right? It's like, I'm not the one here. I live in Nashville, all right? 
you guys know that, hey, look, who else is in Wesley Chapel? Let's get together at the Panera on the corner of da 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 and yada yada. All right? And to sit down and have a cup of coffee for 45 minutes and kind of share in dialogue and help each other out and see where we're going to be. All right? Why not be that around some other like-minded people that, hey, look, let's dialogue. Hey, let's reread chapter blank of this book and let's do it. All right? By the way, anybody started reading uh, Monk and the Merchant yet? Read it. Okay. Read it? What do you think? It's good yeah. stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Interesting concept that some of us are called to be monks. And some of us are called to be merchants, right? And that the merchants need the monks and the monks need the merchants and kind of the synergy. Any of the other takeaways you, you got from it? Well, it's the priests and the kings, and the kings are the merchants. Right, exactly. And it's the uh, same exact concept. It's just a lot of the stuff that you've been talking about, mm -hmm. you know. And the story itself was just a really good story. It is. It's an easy read, really, because kind of it, it engages you. So if you haven't started it yet, it's a pretty easy read. Would you really? agree? Yep. <clears throat> Grab it. Called the Monk and the Merchant. What's the author's name? Ferber. Terry, I think Terry for, Felber. F Felber. Felber. Terry Felber. It's on the last PowerPoint that I posted. It's there. By the way, <coughs> Amazon. That Kindle app. Yeah. It's really good the way it works, and you get the book a lot cheaper. See, mm -hmm. there you go. Kindle app on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Yeah, uh, the Monk and the, it, may, it might be called the Legend of the Merc and the uh, Munch, Monk and the Merchant. <laughs> All right, the Merchant, the Monk. Could be the legend. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, actually, um, I sent a couple of quotes did you? to my son last night. Oh, cool. Them to awesome. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. So, you know, one of our agents turned me on to that. Um, I had never heard of the book and was teaching this. And she said, oh, if you like that book, you might like this. So I picked it up right away. And, and sure enough, I said, boy, this is a really good one. I, I missed this one. Um, he goes, Dad, you reading a book? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to give it to you. He goes, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You, you weasel in just a little cracks, all you need. All right. And, and, and you get them, uh, get them reading again. It's a, it's a powerful thing. Um, it's, a, it's a great book uh, if you get a chance to read that. So um, anyway, so I encourage you to go through um, to stay disciplined and accountable, right? Because we need, uh, if we're going to be accountable to ourselves, we already would be, right? We, all, we need friends and people around us that are going to push us, challenge us, and make it happen. All right. So um, don't forget, we will be back here in two weeks, but I'll be the incorporating seminar. Um, you'll look for an email from us. So be, Jim will be going out probably next week. <clears throat> yeah. And you'll, it'll be a registration page at the bottom. So make sure you register because we don't want it to overfill um, uh, and, uh, and get so big so that we can't uh, meet everybody. So, but um, bring some other people around. We'd love to, to uh, good time to uh, dialogue about that um, and why that's happening. All right? The Beach Realtor, Cindy. What's her last name? Hayden, H-A-Y-D-O-N. There is no, uh, this is the last session of 100K. The next one will be um, uh, next year, sometime, whenever we uh, officially do 100K. So. That's a bummer. Created, as if people tell me, oh, we need these. And say, well, <laughs> I, I get it, right? But create this. You, you don't need me, right? You need, you know, you just need to be around each other, right? You just need to be around, you know, go hang out with each other and, and, and do some stuff. That's, that's, <laughs> <need structure>. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Right, but but we need to we need to implement too. So we got to get the I part of this in there and, and, and going. So you know it's uh, um, I know it's it's kind of fun because it's cozy and trust me I like doing this. And if we if I get some time to do some stuff, it's just that around the holidays it gets busy. And right now I'm pouring into a lot into uh, Orlando and they're going to start in Jacksonville now because we're looking at maybe moving that office. So re uh, uh, vitalize some energy there. There's a lot of good stuff going on here. And Jim's like. Uh, he had to cancel meetings so he could do some of our database work, right? It's like, uh, I can't sign people up fast enough, so, um, which is all great. I mean, things are, are we're, we're booming. Things are, we're blessed beyond. By the way, it's funny, talking about blessed. So Joseph and I went to, um, uh, last time I was here, Samuel was on fall break, so he was actually with me. He was with his grandparents while I was here, and I picked him up and he went over to Orlando, and we flew home a, a day early because, so we can get out of town before the storm hit, all right? So we were fear, fearful of, of getting out. Um, but then uh, Joseph had uh, like a two and a half day fall break last week at the end. So I was in Orlando, so I flew home and he and I went to Charleston. But you guys been to Charleston, South Carolina? It's a great, I love that place. It was the first time I've been there. And they, um, just if, FYI, if you're, he was a 13 year old boy with his dad. It was great because there's a World War II, um, there's a the Yorktown uh, is a war, aircraft carrier that's you know um, been retired there. And there's a destroyer next to it and then a submarine as well. So it was really cool. We got to go through that. I uh, did that for one afternoon in Fort Sumter's there, which is one of the first shots of the Civil War were fired there. And Charleston is the second oldest uh, seaport and second largest seaport on the East Coast, by the way, um, and outside of New York. Um, and huge, just 
Um, and so really cool old houses that people made their wealth and, uh, you know, mostly in shipping and, and that kind of stuff. But uh, really cool. But he and I were walking through. Joseph, he likes that kind of stuff, but he also just, you, Joe, Samuel's a real active guy. All right, he's the, he's the one we adopted, and he's like, you know, let's, what are we going to do that can just run, and run, 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 right? And then Joseph's like, hey, yeah, this is really cool, but you know what? As long as we stay at a, a, a give me a hotel, they call me Mr. McDougal, and that there's a, a robe in the closet, then I'm in, all right? Okay. <laughs> all right, then, 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 then I'm all about that. So, he's, uh, so we, we stay at nice hotels, eat nice dinners, and we were kind of walking around downtown Charleston, and um, we uh, walked through, it's kind of an open-air market, and they were, the guy that drove us, said, oh, this is kind of, they're open later. I said, yeah, they're probably making up for last weekend because they all shut down because of the storm. And he goes, yeah, they got some, some making up to do on their, uh, their revenues. Uh, um, so we were walking through and they, this lady was selling dish towels with, you know, really cool sayings on them. And some of them were funny and some of them were, you know, so we ended up getting one for Jeanette that said blessed and has a heart and with blessed. So that's perfect for our house. So we kind of have a lot of that kind of stuff. Abundance is our napkin holder says abundance uh, on it. So, that, you know, so we're into that kind of stuff. But we, we, Joseph and I were reading some of the other ones. Some of them were pretty funny, like, Abs are great, but have you tasted donuts? <laughs> I said, right on. <laughs> I said, there, was a, there was some pretty funny ones. I got her uh, 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 business card, so I'm going to look up some of that. I'm sure she has some uh, stuff like she handmaids, hand makes these things. But it was pretty funny. Said, Abs are great, but have you tasted donuts? <laughs> it was pretty cool. Um, anyway, so... Yeah, so we'll keep you know uh, keep your ears open. We'll try and maybe do if I if I'm in town, we can do some stuff and get together. But if not, I'm going to encourage you to really seriously. All right, look around the room. You got people that you know around here. You know what I mean? And and um, people that go to the Tuesday night meeting. Um, let's figure out ways that we can still. You want to keep the momentum going, right? You don't ever want to let things wane. And if you're feeling good when you're in rooms like this, then go seek it out. Go find places that you can be around people that think like you. Right? It's it's you know and uh, and you certainly. You know, and don't go to places where they don't think like you. Uh, you know, you're better off to be alone than to be around negative. So, uh, if you got your options, be around positive. All right. Second option, be alone. Okay. Not an option. Be around negative. Right. Okay. So, if you're around negative, remove yourself from that. At least go be alone. And then, if you can even better, go find some other positive people to hang out with. Then go do that. All right. Fair enough. Cool. Awesome. All right, if you guys need anything, let me know, all right? Hope to see you back here in two weeks because that incorporating seminar will be good information. Bring a friend with you, all right? Bring, bring, so, and go find another agent. Challenge yourself. Bring an agent that's not with Future Home and say, hey, you know, you got to go, are you incorporated? And if not, you know what our broker's doing thing on why we should, it, you know, it should be pretty informative. Love to have you, all right? And we don't sell anything there. I'm not going to, you know, you know, put them in a headlock and say join FHR. It's just a good way that we can get eyeball to eyeball with them, all right? And, and uh, it seems like now when I'm eyeball to eyeball with them, they're more prone to open up my next email, my next recruiting email that I send them. All right? They're a little more open to that because they have been eyeball to eyeball. Fair enough? Cool. All right, guys. Have a great day. If you need anything, let me know. I've got to go see if I can find my power cord. Do you have any of those um, Join FHR business cards? <clears throat> I do have some of those. Absolutely. These are, by the way, you guys have any of these? These are really... Jim has a bunch at the office. I think I have a stack here. Do we have an office at the...